Hey folks, <clears throat> trying a different camera angle here. We'll see how this works out because of course, once again, my videography is not available. Um, can't complain about that. He's got a life too. Uh, this in response, I had a couple of questions about some details of canvassing and there, you know, there's no such thing as a stupid question and I will do my best not to provide a stupid answer. Um, this is the uh, McLean of Dewart, the new kilt that I'm making. I, I earlier video I was going on about the, the weird pleating <coughs> of the previous of the of the father's kilt, and I didn't want to slag it too much because there's a chance he's going to see the thing, and I don't want to diminish his enjoyment and his love of of his kilt. But I did want to point out uh, what I considered weirdness in the, in the pleating. Um, I'll do another pleading video separately. So, again, this in response to a couple of more questions about the, um, the setting the canvas and also uh, where I was doing the stitching. So, I've got my roll of um, canvas and it's pre-ripped to five inches wide. I just rip it off lengthwise off the piece because remember, it stretches a little less along its length than it does from side to side. I'm not sure if that difference in stretch makes a difference but I tell myself it does and besides if for no other reason by ripping it lengthwise there's less waste if I'm ripping width I'm limited to 140 odd centimeters and so uh, it always winds up being a bit of waste so ripping lengthwise I've got as long as I've decided to pull off the piece so the kilt is laid out I've cut I've cut out the fish I've left the um the turn back sounds more dignified than flap the turn back for the buttonhole and i've done the steaking so i can lay the canvas on the inner apron with the end hanging over a bit so that having laid it on the canvas i don't know if you can see here with the angle but um i fold the end of the canvas back so it's about the width of um, the, the fold on the inside apron, about a palm's width. That's a non-critical uh, measurement, but by having it that wide in future, if, uh, well, A, it gives more support, more stiffness <clears throat> where it's needed. And also in future, should this person become more girthy, we've got a reservoir of canvas to lay out so you don't have to replace the entire piece or splice in a piece so i folded it back and it's about a pinky's width from the edge of the canvas the fold of the canvas to the um to the fold of the tartan and i'm going to quickly just pin that down now the top edge is making sure the top edge is dressed off one two three will do I lay it across the apron and I'm just going to do this whole darn thing in real time. Um, let's just do that as well. These, these pins are going to come out as I, when I get to it, but we'll see, we'll wait for that. Um, now you may not be able to see it, but I can see it. And when you're working in your own kilt, you should be able to see it. I can see the bump and I can feel the bump. Of the last seam, the seam from the first pleat to the apron. I can feel it under my finger and by moving slightly left I can feel the seam between the first pleat and the second pleat right there. So what I'm going to do, there it is right there, I'm going to run a chalk line down and I'm also going to run in a couple of pins. These pins are going right through the cloth, as we can see, um, on that first pleat. And the reason why I put that mark there is that when I start doing the herringbone stitch, <clears throat> I'm not going to stitch any farther than that second pleat, because with that second pleat, there's oh, three or four layers of cloth. That first pleat, there's two layers of cloth, because we, we want to catch the... Um, when we're sewing this in place, we want to catch the tartan cloth, but we don't want to penetrate to the outside. And if I'm sewing this one, there's too great a chance I'm going to penetrate to the outside and then have to stop and do it over again. So I've made that chalk mark to show 
that I'm not sewing past that mark. And as you can see, there's quite a radius in this kilt, so which I which I wasn't a feature in my earlier videos about canvas. So what I'm going to do, bring it down, and make a dart, a fold like that, as you can see, and bring it down, and make a second dart. Now, I don't really have a hard and fast rule for this. I've I've just done this. See where it's radiused off, and I figure, okay, about an inch, about a width of the thumb, that's where I'll do a first dart. And I just fold and bring it down. And we want, we don't, we don't, we don't want to be cheap here. We don't want a tiny little, we don't want the, the fold of the dart to run out before the edge of the cloth. Because if we do, there's going to be a bump and the customer might well, the wearer might well feel it. So we're being a little bit generous. That's, again, maybe a pinky width I can feel. Um, and I'm just going to run in a pin. Later on, I'll pin it top and bottom. I'm going to put in a second one. And again, no hard and fast rules. Sometimes they're symmetric. Um, with the, um, from the, from the center line, sometimes they're not. I, I don't worry too much about it because frankly, the cloth is telling me where it wants to be. Right? So here it looks like that I've been able to do it with with two darts I'll put that second one in now right and now the cloth is running off the edge there's the uh, there's the turn back and there's where we've cut back the pleats a little bit and even when I've been cutting these back I've been careful to leave as much of a seam allowance as possible because remember in the fullness of time his figure might well his figure will change over the course of his life we're looking ahead 30 years 40 years maybe we're also looking ahead a generation or two or a change of owner so we've left enough seam allowance in there <clears throat> so that should we somebody in the future might not be me because I probably won't be around um still coming to the fact with uh this year, geez, I'll be 65, which makes me, God, 15 years away from 80. So time to make best use of my... Uh, yeah, okay, enough of that model and stuff. Um, in any case, yeah, so there's a seam allowance there because if at some point somebody has to do a profound alteration, we're pulling it completely apart, pressing it flat, we want to leave them enough cloth to work with. So so here's the edge. This is where the fold back is. And this, this turn back is such that it's not, it, it, over, it overlaps ever so slightly. We don't want to turn back where the buttonhole gapes open. Um, it's not a tremendous problem or tremendous issue, but it is a bit of an aesthetic thing. When the person's wearing the kilt, we don't want to get a, a, a buttonhole gaping open and, and worst, worst case scenario, seeing a bit of white shirt through the hole. It just, it's not a professional look. So there it is. So I'm just bringing the cloth forward and I can feel where that uh, where that ledge is, right? Where I've cut back those pleats. And for this video, I'm going to do a chalk mark, but I don't always do a chalk mark. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself maybe not quite as much of a turn back to as I did on the outer apron or the yeah, on the inner apron, but I'm going to give myself mm, that much. No, I could take the cloth completely off and use my scissors, but my shears, I should say. But I just laid down. This is a piece of hobby polystyrene sheet used by modelers for all sorts of things. And, and pipers also use these to make uh, synthetic reeds for their drawers, which I've done in the past. But anyhow, it's a, a well-used sheet. I'm going to have to get a new one one of these days because this one's starting to crack and split and such. But I'm using it as a backing piece so that... I avoid the catastrophe of accidentally cutting my cloth because these shears are beyond sharp. There we go. Shears go away. Rest of the canvas goes away. I'm just going to fling it over at my side table. Narrowly missing my cup of coffee. Jeez, McDonald, get a grip on yourself. <clears throat> and now I'm going to fold that back. And 
get ready to pin that. Now, in this particular case, now, actually, I'll back up a bit. The I, I only recently, in the last year, started doing this. Um, and I think it's a good idea. I've, I've done it a little bit in the past where it would be just a little bit of a turnover, just just the merest amount. But I've just I've been just making it, you know, investing in another inch or two of cloth to uh, to no ill effect. Because the effect here is that having that canvas, two layers of canvas folded back in there, we get a little bit more reinforcement for the the inner side of the buttonhole. I'll see kilts where people have taken a narrow strip and i forget the technical technical name for these narrow linen strips used in reinforcing seams and and, and various other parts in coat and, and pant making they'll put in this narrow strip and sew it in um i think this is a better and certainly a more economical solution because i didn't have to run off the store and find a roll of of uh of that uh narrow material i could accomplish the same thing by just folding my canvas back here and fold it like so now it's overlapping in this case my canvas or sorry my um, tartan is overlapping this uh, fold and I don't want to deal with that because remember I'm, I'm going to be sewing this I'm going to be sewing this flat and in, in seaming this as it were so I'm making sure that my fold of my canvas is parallel to the run of the to the vertical of the of the kilt it's not it's far too easy to skew it one side or the other and you don't notice it until it's done and then you have to go back and do it again so folded it back in fact i'm going to give it just a a millimeter or two more there we go so we've got a decent overlap it's not too deep if it's a it looks like it's about half an inch three quarters of an inch which is a, perhaps a bit on the deep side it doesn't it's again it's not completely critical but if it's too deep, it's going to be a pain in the backside for the customer to try to fish, you know, feel their uh, their strip through, their uh, strap through. Okay, so what I'm going to do because that is there, I'm just going to make a mark. And I'm going to cut that back. I'm going to cut a little side, a little bit to the side of the mark because this white line shows the fold. And I'm just going to give it a bit of a. A bit of a relief there. Put my cutting strip away. There. Now, when I'm sewing this down, now I won't be having to fiddle trying to trying to do a good job where I can't see the canvas because the tartan was obscuring it. So now we can properly see the canvas as I sew it down. I'm going to just temporarily pin this here because often at this point. I find that I want to adjust these, this canvas a little bit. All right. Now that we've got one end secured, I can pop this out and just sort of <laughs> massage it really is the world. Just the word, just sort of smooth it down a little bit because I might uh, I'll often find that the angle will adjust itself uh, uh, minutely when I do that. I'm also going to find when I'm sewing... I'm going to find that the cloth, as you can see, as I push it, you see the cloth is kind of bulging up right there, right? So I smooth it in, smooth it in, lay it flat again. Now that's a bit of an acute angle, but it's where the cloth wants to be. And when it's sewn along its length, it's, uh, it's going to be properly strong, unlike those bad examples that I showed you where people had taken a strip like this and then cut radiuses in it or had short strips and were overlaid and not properly sewn down. So it was accomplishing nothing at all. Okay, so there it is. Now the question had been made or asked about where, um, how, how far I extend the, the stitching. Now all of my little wooden gauges, they should be, yep, at two and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make reference marks along the canvas and this sent this put this is a center line I'm putting down the canvas and changing color for the, the cloth 
I just remembered something. You see, I, fold, I folded it this way. I'm actually going to fold it in so that the extra piece of cloth is on the underside, the side facing away from the body because it's just going to make it a little bit easier to to sew it without catching and, and shifting the cloth and then winding up with a with a lump as it were okay let's pin this up again good so i've done the center line and now i mean you could use a gauge you could use a, a tape measure this is two and a half so i'm going to do a line at one and three quarters yeah, that's right. But I'm just doing it by eye because this is not, um, it's a guide. That's all it is, is a guide, right? It's a good job that I use, um, I'm switching to the yellow. There we are. Okay, that shifted a bit because it <clears throat> deflected because of the, the, the pin is right there. Okay, so that's ready to go. Now, this shows you, this is the area that I'm running the herringbone stitch back and forth. It's attaching the canvas to the fell, the sewn section of the pleats. We don't need it here at the apron. We do need it here, and I'll do the same thing. I don't often, um, actually I'm going to back up a bit here to see that. Now remember, I've, so I folded this back. I'm going to do the same thing that I did at the other end. This, I'm going to fold this so that the, the extra piece is facing away from the client. But I'm also going to do, a re, I'm going to relieve the corner, which makes for a flatter seam when we're sewing the lining in. And then I'm going to relieve the lower edge by, what's that, five-eighths of an inch, three-quarters of an inch? And the reason for that is when I'm sewing the lining in later, I'll only be sewing through a single layer of canvas rather than two. So it'll be, it's going to make it a little bit easier when I get to that stage. And uh, possibly also create a slightly um, finer look that we're not going to have a, a, a bump there. This can be visible through the lining. Okay, so as you can see, you can see the shape that I've cut. I fold it back underneath. Now, rather than make another chalk mark, I'm just going to rub it hard. And there's the fold shows me, so I can fold it back to the fold. Now I'm just going to quickly pin that in place and I can feel right there I don't even need the I don't need to mark it but I will but I can feel where the edge the lower the lower edge the cutaway edge is right there and then I don't know if I'm bothered doing this myself but I'll just do this for the purpose of the, the instructional vid okay that's a bit out but <laughs> there we are so there, so this is another place where we'll be um, doing the, the herringbone stitch. And sometimes it can be quite difficult. Let's imagine if this isn't particularly wide, sometimes with the cloth, and if you've done an alteration, this can be quite narrow indeed, in which case it's just about impossible to avoid stitching through to the outside. And in that case, what I do, and it doesn't happen a lot, but it happens often enough, that I've had to come up with a fix for it, shall we say, is what I do. And incidentally, um, even I think just about almost every time I buy new chalk, I will do a test on a scrap piece of cloth. I'll do a test mark and then rub my iron, heat, run my clothing iron over it, my pressing iron over it to make sure that the wax will in fact disappear under heat there have been one or two times when the wax wouldn't lift as with heat and uh, it was absolutely a heart-stopping moment i've actually found that this is these this black chalk is from the same 
maker and it's presumably um the same recipe shall we say but i found that heat doesn't lift this black chalk at all so i only use the black chalk where it's not going to be seen in the kilt so yeah i do a test mark before i commit with a piece of chalk so having done that i can feel the edge of my i can feel the edge of my canvas there's the fold back it's a bit messy now i can feel of course i can always just cheat right i can just measure that's the width of my canvas, five inches there, but I'm just going to measure back half an inch and there. <clears throat> and then I can do a prick stitch from this side in which it looks like a herringbone stitch on the, out, on the inside, but on the outside, it's just the merest out and, out and just over a millimeter and down again. So you, you might get a series of dimples where the pad stitch has gone through, but you won't have... Um, you won't have a great deal of thread. There'll be no noticeable thread. Um, another trick, which I which I've sometimes done, is that if it's in, unavoidable that I am sending the, the needle and the thread all the way through, that I orient my stitch. I line my stitch with the grain of the cloth so that the, the smallest possible stitch w it is less visible because it happens to be correctly aligned with the the grain. Uh, that we see on the cloth so so there's a couple of things um i hope that answers everybody's questions if not please feel free to ask more questions and uh we'll get them up there yeah thanks